Welcome to People Love Process. Vector art is a clean, hard edge form of artwork, whether you're designing a brand mark or creating an illustration. In this movie, I'm going to show you how to create useful texture resources, and we'll be doing that in Photoshop. And then I'm going to show you how to put them to use within the context of Adobe Illustrator. A lot of people have asked me about this, and I've shown some of this in previous movies, but not to the extent we're going to do in this movie. We're going to really get intensive with applying a texture, and I'm going to show you a variety of ways you can do it. Uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. We'll also use some native effects within Illustrator as well to enhance and improve the look and feel. So let's dive into it. Uh, this is where it started, my rough sketch. You know everything for me starts in analog, so I just sketched this out. Now, I knew I was doing this movie, so I wanted a piece of artwork that would have a background color in it, have a lot of different flat areas of color, so we could really get that texturizing to look really cool. So this is where it started, and of course, I did a refined sketch here. I always set it and tin it back. This is at about 20 and lock the layer. Then on a layer above it, I just start building my final artwork. So these are all shapes. They're all nested into one another, meaning if I pull this out, you can see its butt fit right up next to the other part of his arm. But I want to point out one thing before we jump into this, because this isn't going to match the final base art that I color, because I do one more thing. It's easier to build this way, where all the shapes um, butt right up next to one another. But we're just going to copy this. I'll turn this layer off. I'll go to this layer and I'm just going to paste in place because what I did is I went in after I had all these built and then I just beefed up the line like this and then I filled it. In this case, we'll just fill it white. And with those, then I went to object, I went to path, and then I went to outline stroke. Now, what happens there is you end up with the, um, the stroke. Let's go and zoom in so you can see us. You end up with an out, this is uh, now grouped. If I ungroup it, I can select the center, but notice it's still the same edge, but it's also outlined the stroke that was a three-point stroke. Now it's actually a shape. So what I do is I just select both of these and I just go minus front. We'll go to Pathfinder here. Where'd we put our Pathfinder? There it is up here. We'll select that and I'll just go minus front and all it does, let's go ahead and color this yellow and zoom out a bit so you can see it. And we'll take this one, we'll do the same thing to this, and we'll go, sorry, up to Pathfinder. We'll go minus front, and we'll color it. So what I ended up with is all my shapes with these gaps in between it, hence uh, why I named the layer gapped artwork. I just don't want to walk through that whole process because it, it'd be just redundant, but this is how I did it. So I wanted, I didn't want you to get confused once you see the final artwork. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the layers that make up the final based artwork. And this is before we've gone ahead and added any detailing in terms of texturizing. Now, I also included in this file the tonal family I established and the shading hues that I'm using to do minor shading. We're, do, we're going to be most of our, doing most of our detailing, that is, um, not in vector form, but using uh, the textures we're going to create. But I just wanted to point this out. This is the foundation we're now going to build upon utilizing textures. So if you want to check out how I set up the shading hues, uh, then by all means, turn on those layers if you get access to the exercise files and you can see how all of that works. But this is the hierarchy of the base art with our background. Notice we're using layers to, we're going to be using layers to compose everything. So let's go ahead and switch over uh, to Adobe Photoshop and then I'll walk you through uh, the rest of the process. So we're in Photoshop now and the first uh, source image that I want to go over is one that um, I'm well, let me first say I love texture exploring. Now, I've been doing that ever since art school. We had a photography class. Uh, we were assigned to come up with some theme for what we're going to be doing for photographs. 
And I was down by the art store getting supplies one day, this downtown Seattle, and right next door was an old hotel that was boarded up. Basically, it was just abandoned. Nobody was doing anything with the property. And just on a whim, I climbed over the boarded up front of the building and went inside and I started taking photographs of these cool, like, peeling walls and stuff. I just thought it looked cool. And that's kind of where I first got stuck on texture exploring. That was my very first texture exploring adventure. And from there, I moved forward uh, from that point. Now, that was before digital. That was just using an SLR camera. It wasn't until uh, digital started coming on the scenes in the 90s, but even then, you didn't get great photographs with one or two megapixels. Uh, so once digital cameras really came on the scene, that's when I started texture exploring. Um, it's so much fun. And so I was downtown Salem, where I live, walking through an alley, going from a craft brewery place to another business. And it's faster going down the alley. And I pass by a door on the back of a building, a steel door. And this is what I saw. And I go, oh, that's a cool texture. So I shot this with my iPhone. Now, this is the source photo, but I think we can approve on it. So usually what I do, this one had a hot spot because you can see the sun shining up here in the middle, down the bottom left. And those are areas that when we blow it out to create the texture, those are just going to turn white. So what I usually do now that they have content aware fill uh, using um uh, I believe it's machine learning or Adobe AI or whatever. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and outline these areas. This is where one hotspot is. We'll go ahead and add this area to the hotspot. We'll even add this area up here, even though I don't think this is that critical being up there. And then maybe this one down here like that. So uh, you could do it like that. Just select those. Simply go up to... Um, edit, pull down to content where fill. Now it's going to do its magic. So I'll go ahead and click on that. This will pop up and look at that. We're just going to go, yes, that's what we want. So we're going to click yes and boom. Look how easy that was. And it's a texture. So by the time we turn it into a resource, you won't even know that's not what it was. So if I turn those areas off, this is what it was, this is what it is now. It's really, really cool. So I just want to show you that because um, I do do a little bit of Photoshop work, but because it's a texture and it's degraded, guess what? It doesn't have to be perfect. You're degrading it anyway. So I get to a point where I have all these, and you can see actually, I actually did more there than I did on my final texture. I did the middle, but I kept these ones on the, the side and the edges uh, because it really didn't matter. And then the easiest thing is I like keeping a PSD file with my source photo in it and then any adjustments I do with layer effects. So in this case, we did a black and white. So we turn it to black and white. I found it's easier to uh, blow out a texture and get what you finally need. Then I set up a, um, a layer, uh, levels that is. Uh, for another layer effect just to blow it out. And this is kind of what I'm after is having this here. But this isn't exactly what I want. What is shown here is white. I want to inverse it. So that's where you could either go here to this uh, once you have the content aware all fused together with your image. And we could simply just go up here to image, adjust, and we could invert it. And this could be the final texture. But I thought it worked better. I'm going to undo that just so the PSD file you have doesn't have that in it. What I did is I usually will just Command A, select everything, and then I will go Copy Merge, and then I'll go up to the top above my adjustment layers and go Command V and paste it. And that gives me um, kind of a flattened image of everything we just did. And then on that alone, I'll just have that layer selected and then I'll go adjustment and then I'll go invert. And I think it looks better. 
it doesn't look as blown out as it did if you try to do it to the photograph. So that's all I did uh, to get to my final artwork. And I saved this out as a bitmap TIFF image. And if you've watched my other movie uh, where I show how I create uh, bitmap TIFF images and compose them. I think it was the barbecue one with the zombie barbecue. Uh, it's very easy to save out a TIFF image. Let's go to another texture we're going to be using. All of these are actually going to be used in the, the artwork I showed you. Uh, here's another one. This one's easy. This is almost ready to go out of the gate. I almost have to do nothing, but I don't like this part of the photo. I don't know what that is, if it's a nail or something. Uh, in the side of this was like a metal container, I believe. Um, so all I'm going to do, by the way, metal acne is the name I gave it because I like giving textures a unique name. So have fun with the names too. This is easy. Just that. And we'll go up to edit. We'll go content where fill. It'll say, does that look good? Of course, if you couldn't do that, then that's not a very good uh, feature. And that's all I did is I just removed that one little spot because now it's perfect. Again, I would just flatten this, save this. I'm going to use it as a, a JPEG image within the context of our artwork in Illustrator. Let's go to another one. All these photos I find in different places. Uh, the first one was in an alley in the town I live in. The second one, the metal acne one, uh, that was a junkyard. It was a metal drum, the side of a metal drum that I took a photograph of. This one, I took a photo in the slums of Nairobi in Africa, and this goes back quite a few years. Uh, but I just like the way this looked on the side with uh, all these things that had been posted up. So this is the source photo. And what I've done, because let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit, it's not a perfect photo. Even though I had an SLR, I was just shooting these as quick as I could. And you can see it's a little bit fuzzy, but guess what? It doesn't matter, it's a texture. But we're gonna turn this on. Actually, let's zoom back in. I shouldn't have zoomed out so quickly. Uh, we'll go back and we'll zoom in here. So this is what it looks like. And all I did is I did a smart filter to sharpen it a bit. And this is what I did just to improve uh, the, the sharpness. That's going to translate better, I think. This is a little fuzzy. This is a little sharper. It's going to work a little better. So that's all I did there uh, to improve the clarity just a little bit, just so it's a little more crisp and not so fuzzy. And then of course, I'm going to adjust the layers, like levels that is like this with another layer effect. And I'm going to save this out as just a regular, again, um, RGB JPEG of this photograph. Now I also created another asset and I put those in the same file here so you can deconstruct it. And let's go ahead and turn these layers off here. So we just have the background and I'm gonna turn this off, this on, that is the background, make it black. And I'm gonna turn this on. And all we've done here is we've created a white ping. So if I turn off the background, you won't even be able to see it. If I turn off the background in the file, you can see aspects of it. So that's all it is. We're actually gonna use this one as well. So I just wanted to walk you through and explain that. Uh, one thing I wanna do, vector art is very hard edge. This layer, the FPO for position only, that is just the background of our illustration. I just copied and pasted it into uh, this grayscale file. That's why it's gray, not colored. And I did that just so it would define where that edge is. Because years ago, a friend of mine, John Skews, uh, he sent me a really cool texture that was done by rolling out ink uh, with, a, with a kind of a texturized burnisher and it created all these cool textures. And so that source file uh, that I derived these edge textures from is in the exercise files for uh, this movie. So you can see what that is. I'm not showing you that right now. All I'm gonna do is turn on this and you can see those layer, the different pieces cutting in and kind of diffusing that, what will be the background edge of our artwork. So if I turn on the four position only, and let's go ahead and turn off some of these. So you can see all I did, and this is just a Frankenstein job, just copying and pasting, rotating into place, 
just to get a nice unorthodox edge. This one obviously here came about after I got the bottom done and the top done. And then this one, I went back and I go, ah, I don't like that area there. That looks better with a little more there. I thought this area in the top left looks a little better, cutting in more like that. And so it's just piecing together this until you got something that's going to work. And it's this that I saved out um, as a bitmap TIFF, and we're going to utilize that within our artwork as well. So we're using textures in a lot of different ways here. Let's go to the last one. Uh, this is some textures a friend of mine sent me. He had bought an old photographic lab and he found all these emulsion film plates in there with this distressed on it. And he knows I love textures. So he took photographs of all of them and he said, here you go, Vaughn. Here's a whole set of textures. I've been using them ever since. They're awesome. So um, all I'm going to do on this is ad adjust the layers to blow it out. But on this one, I'm more or less interested in the artifacting that you find on the inside, like all of these areas. So what I do on something like this, and this is where you don't have to be a Photoshop master. Um, all I'm going to do is just highlight areas that I like the artifacts like this. Like might isolate that area like that. And then I'll just make a, I'll just go ahead and copy it and just manually move it over into a position that I think looks good. And that's it. That's all I'm doing. I don't I don't bother to really get super technical with it because it's a texture. You don't need to. And so I'll spend time doing that. And once I filled in, I have enough volume with those artifacts in place. Uh, the and manual building, it's just going to take you some time. But you can move stuff around, you know, here's part of the one that I moved from over there. But when it's all said and done, once I get all of that, I'll, in this case, invert it, and I end up with this, which is just artifact little uh, specks. And if we zoom in on that, you can see what those look like. I just like that they're not uniform. So it really does work great for um, adding artifacts uh, to our artwork. And you're going to see this used as well. So I just wanted to walk you through all these source textures we're now going to utilize within Adobe Illustrator. So let's go ahead and go back to Illustrator and walk through uh, that process. Now, the first one we're going to do is the texture that we found in the alley. So it's the alley texture. And that's going to set on top of our background here. You can see I've named them the same so we'll go ahead and turn this on. Here's the texture we created uh, from that alleyway door. And all we're going to do is select this. We'll go to a line and I'm going to position it here. And this first one, all I'm going to do, and by the way, this is a bitmap texture. So the background, which is white, if you open it up in Photoshop, when placed into Illustrator by default is transparent. So whatever we apply color to will be applied to the black pixels only. And we're going to apply just white on this. And that's going to eat away the background. Now, I I rarely just use 100%. So we're going to adjust the opacity here to diminish it a bit. And I think that looks pretty good at 45. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to take the exact same texture. We just rotated it 180 degrees. So that's this right here. If we go ahead and go back, you can see this is exactly what we had. So all I did is just rotate it 180 degrees. We've colorized it with the shading value I made for the green right here. And now we're going to multiply it, which we've done at 70%. This is where we want to mask it because I don't want it to come outside the edge of our artwork. Even though we're going to put it a, a border that eats away at that, um, to control the texture where you want it to go, you can use mask. So in this case, I'm just going to mask it with this shape. So I'll select that mask shape, move it to the uh, layer that the, the background texture is on, select both, 
and go ahead and mask it. Now, if you don't know what masking command is, just go to object, you go to clipping mask and make. Notice I have F1. So that's all I did is I selected both, hit F1. So make sure to watch my keyboard shortcuts movie on People Love channel uh, because it'll save you so much time over the years if you set up your keyboard shortcuts to do routine tasks like that. Makes it really, really easy. Okay, the next thing I want to do is some of you might be saying, well, are you going to use any like texture brushes? Well, no, not really, but I'm going to show you one just to show you, yes, you can use a, you can use a texture brush and I'm going to use one in the context of this. So let's go ahead and turn this layer on and you can see a brush here. Now I'm not going to go into how I made this. This is just a vector art brush because I'm developing uh, a movie for this channel where I'll go over how to create art brushes, how to create pattern brushes, how to create scatter brushes, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So I don't want to give a lot of that away, but we will do it here because I think it's, it's going to work good. So we're just going to select this and whatever color the stroke is, is the color your vector brush uh, comes out at. In this case, it's magenta. So we're just going to change it to black like that. But we don't want to leave it at black. What we want to do is we want to paint a texture over the top of the speaking bubble because I think that would that would actually look pretty good. So all we're going to do to use a brush like this, you, I usually use the paintbrush tool. Now that the brush is selected, if we go to brushes, I don't even think I have brushes open. Let's open it up like that. There we go. You can see our brush right here. Uh, to control a brush, you just, you, whatever way you go, it'll apply it that way. If we go from the bottom up, if we go from the bottom top down, it'll, it'll apply it the opposite way. So if I want uh, the darkest spot to be on the left-hand side of the speaking bubble, then I would want to go like six o'clock position uh, to a 12 o'clock position, kind of like that. And that looked horrible. Uh, here's another thing. Go into your uh, thing and turn off accurate when you're using this. Just turn on, go towards smooth. I usually don't use this, but with brushes you want. Otherwise, it puts all these unnecessary anchor points. Let's go ahead and zoom in so you can see this really good. And we'll take this and I'm just going to put one right here like that. But on this, I want the size and to control the size of the brush, you adjust the size of your path. So we're going to go to 0.75 like that. We're going to color it instead of black. We're going to color it white. I think we can even go smaller. Let's go 0.5 like that. We'll move it into place. Actually, I think it might be a little too small like that. That looks pretty good. And if you don't like how big it is, there's it's a texture, so you can distort it. It doesn't matter like that. That's fine. We're going to go to opacity. We're going to set this one, let's say 20% like that. We just want it to add some surface uh, texture to the black area of the speaking bubble. It's not going to affect the white, even though it's going over the top because it is white. Uh, but that looks good. So that's all I wanted to show you. I did. I wanted to give you a sneak peek of, of things to come. Uh, but I don't want to give away everything because I want to focus on just brushes um, at a later date. But I did want to show you that. So that's how I'd use a brush in context of this. Obviously, you can use all these methods together. Uh, textures just work together naturally. So the next thing I want to do is the, the one I named Metal Acne. So let's go back to layers. We'll turn that on. You can see this is nothing but just that photograph that we ran content where fill to fix that one spot on. And all we're going to do here is select this texture, go to the transparency palette, go to the blend mode, and we're going to select the color mode, the blend mode that we're going to select is color dodge. Look, <laughs> that's just, I love this. Every time I see this, I, I like it. Check out how nuts that looks. This is like really cool. So the first time I did that, I'm like, whoa, that looks awesome. I like that. Um, 
I really wish in Illustrator they get this worked out so you could just hover and go over these and it would change like it does in Photoshop. They still haven't done that in Illustrator. Uh, that'd be really nice. Now, not by the way, not all the blend modes in Photoshop are in Illustrator like uh, Vibrant, which I really like, isn't in Illustrator, unfortunately. Not sure why. I don't know. Maybe it has something to do with it works with pixels only, not vector art. Who knows? But uh, we're going to adjust the opacity because I don't want this 30%. I want it to be a bit more subtle. And I think that looks better at 30%. And notice we have these shapes, which are just from our artwork on top. And this is going to be the mask because I don't want this to go over everything, just these specific areas. And I'm going to hit F1, which is my keyboard shortcut for mask. And it masks those into place like that. So that's great. Um, the next thing I want to do is we're going to take that wall post uh, image uh, here. I'm going to turn it on. You can see it's just a giant the photograph over everything here. And all we're going to do on this is we're going to select this uh, image and we're going to go and we're going to select blend mode. And this blend mode we're going to do is overlay. So we're just going to click overlay. Look at how awesome that looks. That's just, man, so cool. Okay, so we're going to go to, notice, by the way, because it's overlay, wherever it's white, and in this case, the artboard's white, so it shows up like there's nothing there. So it, it doesn't uh, interact really with white, but every other color, except black, it's not interacting much with that, and we're going to address that coming up. But Overlay looks really cool. All we're going to do now is adjust the opacity. Uh, right now, it's at 100% opacity, and I think it'd look better a little more uh, uh, subtle. And so we'll just punch in 55. That looks good. We have a mask ready for it here, and I'll just hit F1 to mask that into place. That looks pretty cool. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use that uh, that ping image that we created in Photoshop. So all we're going to do is we're going to select this. You can see that it's white just sitting on top like that. And I think that looks pretty good. But we already have that texture going over everything from the photo, the full color photo. On this one, I want the opacity to be subtle and I want to isolate it only over the areas we need it, which in this case, it's going to, oops, it helped if I select it and then set the opacity to it. This is only going to be masked into the areas that are black just to give a nice texture within those, but it will align with that other photograph texture since they come from the same source. And we'll go ahead and mask that. And I think that looks pretty, uh, pretty cool too. So uh, not everything has to be a texture. Now I want to kind of pop out the character uh, from the background. Oh, and by the way, I should point out in my original build, if you look at the basic shapes, I had an owl here and now it's like some uh, uh, New World Order bird type pyramid with an eye. Um, I just changed that because I do owls all the time. I don't want to do another owl. So I just changed it. So it'd be a little different and uh, look cute, but still be like, what is that? So uh, I forgot to point that out. Now, the next thing is I want to add kind of a halo around the artwork. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and we're going to go ahead and turn on uh, this layer. And you can see I've just taken copies of my uh, base artwork and I've just added a nice thick, in this case, it's a 10 point stroke. Uh, to these shapes. All we want to do now, and we're going to go to the appearance panel here, uh, and all we're going to do is we're going to go in and turn on Gaussian Blur because I already have it applied. I just have it turned off. So we're going to turn it on so you can see it goes from that hard edge to a nice kind of subtle glow around everything. And that's what I want. I want that subtle glow and we'll adjust the opacity here. Let's see, we'll select these. And I think I wanna knock it down just a little bit cause I'm gonna have another element behind it. So it doesn't have to be a hundred percent value. I think I'm gonna go about 60 or so. 
like that. And oops, let's go back to the appearance panel. I should have done it here, my bad. And do 60 like that. Hmm. That's weird. I don't know why it's doing that. You know what? I'm just going to leave it. Um, that's odd. I didn't run into that before. It's like uh, we have the stroke. Let's try it here. Maybe I just applied it to the wrong area. There we go. Might have to do it to this area too, the fill. I swear I didn't have to do that when I was uh, trying this earlier. But there, oh, you know what? It, <laughs> oh, I didn't even have it, uh, I didn't have it selected. Okay, this is the real world here. So you get to see me screw up. There we go. That's what I wanted, 60%. I'm not going to worry about the fill because the fill is behind everything. Uh, we'll just focus on the stroke. There we go. I want it more subtle. So, yes, I I usually I'm not trying to talk and carry on a, a narrative as I'm working. So um, I wasn't paying attention. So we have that set. But I also want to add a rough in effect. So if we select this again, this is just a fill with a six point outline. Uh, but just so you can see what's going on, let's go ahead and zoom in on an area like maybe the hand type here. And you can see that outline that we now have selected. All I want to do here is I want to go to, um, let's see, we're going to go to, we'll go to effects. And then I'm going to go to distort. No, I'm sorry. I'm going to go to now now I okay I will find it let's go up here that's weird it's like I think it's not showing me the full menu that's kind of odd let's go up here and we'll go distort and transform that's why I was okay so look distort and transform this is what we want and I was trying to get there by going to, oh, maybe it's because I didn't select the layer. Duh. Wow, I'm making a lot of errors here. Okay. I was, I was going to say, I swear that's the way I got to it the last time I was using it. Um, okay, there we go. Now, one thing you want to do uh, when you use this is the first thing, just click on smooth and click on absolute. Because all we're going to do is we're going to make it so it's imperfect. Now, right now it's 10 points. I think that we, we might mess with that size a little bit. I, I'm not sure. But the first thing I want to do is on detail, I want to go down. I don't want it to do it too much. So we'll do it like two. And then we'll go ahead and go to, in terms of the size, maybe we go, I don't know. 10 maybe like that might even go less than that now this is a random thing so if you do it the first time and you like it uh, then click OK and make sure to save it make sure you you save that and then make a copy of it and try another setting to see if you like it better because once you get some, it's hard. You'll never get the exact same thing twice is what I'm saying. It's randomized. Uh, it doesn't say in here that it's randomized, but I realized that uh, years ago when I was using this. I'm going, well, I swear that was my settings. Well, it was, but it doesn't mean it's going to come out the same every time. Uh, so be aware of that. So all I did there is I just didn't want that perfect a profile of white around all the background. I want something to set it off, but I like how wobbly it is now. It kind of goes, I could see his arm kind of wobbling as it's moving up, kind of tipping his hat there. So I just wanted to walk you through that. So um, by the way, I if, if I was recording this for LinkedIn, they like to fix everything that I just screwed up there. But because I edit my own videos and I really don't want to spend the time to, to clean all that up, you get to see the good, the bad, and the ugly. So that's the way it is. 
Okay, let's jump on the next thing. So that frame, the brush frame. So look at the hard edge shape. Does that look bad? No, but we're gonna turn on the brush frame. That looks a whole lot better. It just looks really cool with that turned on. So that's why we did that. So that's an easy one. Now, I also, as I was looking at this, and you've seen in a previous uh, movie where I showed you how to make halftones, uh, authentic looking halftones, not the ones you do in Illustrator, the ones you create in Photoshop, bring into Illustrator. And I was looking at this, I'm going, I think I want some halftone in it. So I'm gonna turn this on. I made these halftones years ago. These are just nebulous shapes and I half toned them, but they're, I go back to them all the time. So all we're gonna do right now, right now it has uh, no fill, no stroke, but they're bitmap. So I can just click a color and we're just gonna align it like that. And I think that looks pretty good, but I think I'm gonna knock down the opacity from 100% just so it's a little less overt to 60. So you see some of that texturing come through it and that looks good. And once I did that, I realized eh, it needs some of that half toniness in other places. We didn't really have a lot going in his shirt color where it's tan. So I decided to add just hits of that all around. And it's actually using the same one. I just masked and rotate, rotated it in everything. And if you want to check all that out, you can dive in and deconstruct these further than what I might explain. So uh, make sure to always do that. That's how you can learn even more. Now, the, the final ones I want to go through, and this is, uh, this is the coolest kind of texturing, uh, because frankly, anybody can create this, even if you're, you don't like going texture exploring, or you don't want to go out and shoot photographs of, you know, bad surfaces, uh, this is an easy one you can do. And it involves, uh, taking an old toothbrush and I'll show you another another example of this in a little bit, but that's how I created these. And I created this years ago. I scanned it in at a high resolution. That's why you want to have a flatbed scanner because it's a good resource. And all I'm going to do on this speckling texture is I'll select it. I'll go ahead and move it over. And on this one, all I'm going to do is I'm going to color this yellow because we don't have a lot of yellow in here but I want the opacity to be somewhat uh, uh, transparent. So we'll do 80% like that. And I think that looks pretty good. And now I'm gonna do another one. Now this one on top is the exact same splatter, just rotated. So if I select this, right now it's just white. So if I rotate it, let's go ahead and go up here and I rotate it back like this you won't see the yellow because it was just the same exact texture, same exact placement, just rotated. But you can use the same texture over again. And in this case, all we're gonna do is we're gonna change the color and the color changed to white, but obviously I don't want it to look like it's snowing or a giant has dandruff and it's sprinkling on them. So we're gonna knock the opacity, we're gonna knock off 60% to 40 just so it's subtle. And let's go ahead and zoom in on a couple of these areas. So you can see how nice those little speckles are looking, how the texture is looking, it's running through and over the color, uh, a lot of fun. Okay, the last one I wanna do was the, the texture from the old film plate that my friend sent me. Uh, and that's the one we'll turn on here. You can see it over here, we'll select it, we'll go ahead and uh, align it to our artwork here. And this last one, all we're gonna do is we're just gonna color it purple from our tonal family here, just on top. We're not gonna adjust the value just to get those darker flecks going through everything. And I think this just looks really cool and it was a lot of fun to create. Let's go ahead and zoom in on a few areas. Like we'll zoom in down here. You can see the speaking bubble all the textures, the flecking, running through everything. So really, really cool. And in the exercise files, I did put this final art. So uh, the, the build file, which I'm taking you through, you can try it yourself, but also if you can't remember any of the settings, just open up the other file and you can deconstruct it there. So we went from clean artwork like this, vector artwork, 
Is this bad? No. Is this better? I think so. It's a lot more fun and uh, has a lot more humanity to it because of textures. Now, textures don't have to be this overt. Here's an illustration I did for a local jazz festival. And again, one of the best texture tools you can use is an old toothbrush because that's how I took those speckled textures. Here's an, another uh, uh Another one from, I created a whole, I did it on like five or six sheets of paper years ago. And again, I use these all the time. And all we're going to do here is go ahead and color this and we'll color it uh, a nice blue color. We'll set the opacity to 70 so it's a little transparent. We might even go to a lighter color. I think I like that better like that, and then here's the exact same one, just rotate again, we colored it uh, a golden yellow, and then we applied, in this case, for this one, we applied the blend mode overlay, so it just changes colors and stuff as it goes over other colors. So it doesn't have to be hard. So whether you're walking, uh, walking down an alley and you see a cool door, or here's one from a previous, uh, um, people love a movie. I was at a Chinese restaurant checking out after we ate there and I looked down at the counter and this is what I saw. And I'm like, Oh, cool texture. Ladies looking at me weird. Cause I'm like taking a picture of her countertop. Uh, but if you want to check this out, just make sure to go to the people of process channel and look for a movie called creating with found textures, because I wasn't looking for this. I wasn't texture exploring, but I saw it and I captured it. I found the texture and it worked great for the hair on this character. And on this project, we go over a lot of different uh, various usages. You could create it with a pencil. That's how I created his cheeks. And that shows it, shows it here. So a lot of fun you can have with textures. The beautiful decay you see in textures can be found everywhere. They are a natural byproduct of the second law of thermal dynamics. So I encourage you to do some texture exploring whenever you're, wherever you're at and see what type of creative resource you can produce with them. All the texture resources shown in this movie are available in the exercise files, which you can find a link to in this movie's description. They also include some source photographs I've collected while traveling, so you have no excuse not to experiment with those and you're limited only by your imagination. The best part about creating and using textures is that they never go out of style. And it'll be a creative resource you can leverage for a lifetime in your design and illustration projects. The exercise files for each of the People of Process movies, again, can always be accessed via the link in the description below. A big thank you to those who have and to those who have also become members as well. You help me to continue making uh, content for this channel, and I appreciate your support. Thank you for watching People of Process, and as always, I hope this content helps you to improve your own creative process.